Now we want to proceed and introduce dual problems to uh, given convex optimization problems. And the way it, it, this works is that it, we utilize uh, the structure of the original problem and uh, it's not it's not that there is only one canonical dual problem to a given problem, uh, but in fact the dual problem is the result of choosing a so-called uh, perturbation function. And choosing different perturbation function, which is sometimes possible or sometimes reasonable for some problems, can lead to different um, uh, dual problems. Okay, so um, to, uh, to start, let's introduce what... Uh, perturbation function is. Okay. So, uh, definition for a given optimization problem and uh, we denote this by uh, P and this will go throughout the lecture because we will always um, come back and refer to this uh, problem and the P stands for primal problem and then D in turn will be uh, short for dual problem uh, once we come that far. So we want to minimize uh, f of x over x and h um, so for a given optimization problem, a uh, perturbation function is a function, and we denote this by capital Phi, and capital Phi maps from the Cartesian product of two spaces H and G to um, the, the, the extended real line and such that and as you see phi takes uh, two variables one from the space of, um, of our optimization problem and G from just a different space and the important thing is that we want um, to recover the original uh, um, objective function f by just setting this second variable to zero so such that phi x zero is equal to f of x for all x and h and where g is another um, finite dimensional in a uh, product space. Um, okay, so G will be the space where the dual variables or the variables for the dual problem um, will live and therefore this, this G somehow determines, so if you have like a one-dimensional space uh, for G, so if only a one-dimensional perturbation of the problem, then uh, the resulting uh, the resulting dual problem will be one-dimensional. Um, so perturbation function obviously makes sense because we, uh, we assume that we can use different variables in phi and we still get um, some optimization problem which is in, in some way perturbed and if we uh, have the perturbation zero then we just recover this uh, original um, optimization or minimization problem. Okay and we now want to discuss um, different examples so that you get the feeling what makes sense in a different context and as I promised um, these examples uh, in these examples the perturbation function will be uh, related to the structure of these problems. So A and A will so, uh, will ultimately lead to Fenchel duality. Okay, so 
uh, we start with this primal problem and we want to minimize actually a sum of two functions uh, f of x plus g composed with l so g we have g of lx okay um, over x and h and uh, the motivation here is that well we have we, we, we can somehow decompose our ob objective function into two parts and these two parts may have different like functions or different uh, may serve different purposes for example f can penalize uh, different things than g does in 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 your in your model and um, the uh, let's let's first fix what, what uh, the, the spaces here and then I will uh, I will come to some reasonable choice for Phi okay um, so here uh, F obviously takes a variable H so it maps from H to R bar and L also takes a variable from um, uh, from the space H and we want to map it to G uh, linear uh, should this should be a linear mapping and obviously since we are in finite dimensions then this will also be continuous and we have the function G which maps from the space G to R bar uh, obviously these spaces are R bar so that these things also can uh, contain constraints. Okay, so um, once we have this structure here, we can use this to introduce um, the perturbation variable, and this somehow decouples this f uh, part from the g composed with l part. So here we can choose phi of x y uh, as uh, f of x. Um, plus g of lx plus y. Okay, and this means the perturbation variable somehow shifts the function g uh, in the space capital uh, in the space g, and so that the perturbation is basically that you have different inputs to f and g. So it somehow de uh, is able to decouple this once you allow the, uh, the perturbation variable, variable y um, to be different from zero. That's the kind of notion behind this. Then uh, we have example B. Example B will lead to uh, Lagrange duality. And Lagrange duality uh, will lead to the notion of Lagrange multipliers uh, eventually. So here um, we start from a primal problem where we, uh, which is constrained by um, by inequality constraints. So this will be minimize um, f of x over x in h such that uh, h of x um, is a function and this should be uh, an element of some cone k okay um, where um, okay we are now f uh, should map from h uh, to r bar h uh, should map from H to the space G. Okay, um, this function is not assumed to be. Um, uh, I mean, this is not is not a linear mapping. Uh, so I should uh, I should write this uh, not a linear mapping. I mean, it can be a linear mapping. Um, but it doesn't have to. Um, instead, it should. It, 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 we, we, uh, this will be um, a convex function with respect to the cone k, in fact. And 
uh, k uh, is a subset of g of the of the image space of s uh, of, of of h so k is a subset of g and this is a cone okay so this gives you some uh, gives you a constraint optimization problem and the most popular choice for k would be um, for example um, the cone of non positive numbers uh, so h of x then should be um, in the in the like uh, not, not non non positive numbers but uh, the vectors with non positive entries in in rn so then h of x would be component wise less or equal to zero so um, this will give you inequality constraints but you can like equivalently like or, or equally easily formulate this with just a general cone and then uh, we have seen that uh, this cone also has a polar cone and we'll use that later and the polar cone to the um, to the cone of non of, of vectors with non positive entries so with like uh, less or equal than zero entries um, is the cone of uh, non negative uh, yeah non negative vectors entry wise okay um, yes and now the perturbation function which we want to choose uh, will be as follows so then we set this to be well f of x of course uh, whenever we are feasible so f of x if um, h of uh, h of x um, is in k uh, and here we want to make use of our uh, perturbation and we want to just add h of x plus y should be in k so here the perturbation um, corresponds to um, some like perturbation in the in the constraints so as we said uh, as we uh, had here the the y con uh, was a like a decoupling of these two functions f and g and here um, the the y goes into uh, into the constraints so we assume that well not h of g, h of x should be in k but h of x perturbed by the vector y should be in k okay and uh, like this it turns out that we we will get to the notion of um, Lagrange multipliers and so that we can um, uh, we, we can basically have this um, as a we, we can our, our dual variable uh, will be related to this uh, constraint um, satisfaction okay and uh, otherwise we will be plus infinity because we assume then this problem is not feasible and for for infeasibility we always have plus infinity as a as a useful value okay and i want to just specialize this a bit to make it uh, more accessible and this is this might be more uh, familiar so this will be duality for linear programming this is a special case of of this okay and there are various equivalent ways of formulating a linear program uh, one of them is minimize c transpose x um, over x in rn um, such that x is component wise or entry wise uh, non-negative so it's in the uh, cone of non-negative vectors if you want um, and ax should be component wise uh, less or equal than b so ax a, a minus b is entry wise component wise um, a vector or is a vector with non-positive entries with less or equal than zero entries okay um, this is the, this is one way to 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 formulate a linear program and you can uh, obviously uh, in an, um, find equivalent like standard formulations but um, like this one is a good one okay and then 
you can write phi of you can you can define phi x y. Um, by the way, I should also give this a box here so that you can easily recognize it. So here, phi x of y will be basically as above c transpose x if um, x is greater or equal than, or consists of greater or equal than zero entries and ax minus b and here uh, we can also add our, our variable y is less or equal than zero and my space management is a bit poor okay and then plus infinity otherwise okay and like this um, you uh, you you disturb your problem um, an analogously um, to the Lagrange duality by uh, placing this y variable as in these in these constraints which are determined by the um, by the linear operator a. Okay, and these x greater or equal than zero um, this this will not be disturbed. Okay, so let's give this a box too. Okay. Um, so now we have we, we, we have seen three different um, ways to construct um, a, a perturbation function for convex optimization problems. And of course there are uh, there are ways to combine these, there are ways to um, to to get special perturbation function, functions for special problems, but um, these two are, are, are the, the, these two and the specialization of one of them. These are very, very basic cases I want you to know about and I want you to deal with. 